Hi everybody, welcome to develop your English skills channel. Today lesson is six important didactic concepts. Uh, there is many and the different concepts that uh, it's uh, many future teacher don't know their definition. That's why I will choose some of them from time to time and I will explain it for you. In this lesson, I will give you just six of them. I will give you the explain, uh, explanation of them. If you have another uh, ones, you can uh, ask me in, in the comment. I will give you their definition too. So let's start with the first one, which is elicitation. Well, what is the meaning of elicitation? The elicitation technique is used to get a better picture of the learner's language abilities by asking them questions that they might already know, but to encourage learners to practice more of the language. So here in this uh, uh, elicitation, the teacher asks the students about uh, uh, some, uh, something that they already know the answer, just to motivate them to participate in the discussion in the classroom, also to uh, motivate them to use the, the language. Because if they know the answer, they will also improve their self-confidence. So in this uh, uh, concept or this technique, teacher use just to help students to overcome their fear, hesitation, etc. I hope it's be clear for now. Let's move to the next one, which is controlled practice. What is the meaning of controlled practice? Controlled or restricted practice involves students in using target language in a good and restricted way in which they have little choice over what language to use. Examples of controlled practice activities are repetition and substitution drills. So in this uh, controlled practice, that is practice that has just one answer, not have many or different answers. This is what is uh, mean by controlled practice. For example, as I give her a repetition, so the teacher uh, see the sound that the learners repeat that sound. They has no other choices just to repeat this uh, this sound. Let's move to the next one. These concepts it uh, uh, it it gives many uh, questions in the exams in teaching exams. That's why I focus on this concept in my correction of the previous exams, also in the, my, list, my, my lessons. Even if I find a, a, a concept, I try hardly to explain it for you and give you the definition of it. So let's move to the third one. Fossilization. What is mean by fossilization? Fossilization refers to the continuous use of anchored linguistic features that become a permanent or fixed part of the way a person speaks or writes a language. Fossilized errors are the fixed or fossilized language aspects. So from that definition, we can understand that fossilization is an error that learner use because he believe and the tank he is correct. So uh, fossilization, uh, we have all many types of errors. This uh, fossilization is one type of error. And they think that give uh, that they ask a question in the exam teaching in previous uh, uh, exams. So I still don't give you uh, the lesson about errors. Soon, inshallah. So this uh, what means by fossilization when the learner. Uh, make a mistake because he believe and think that it's correct answer, not incorrect. Let's move to the fourth one, which is input or input language. Input in a language learning is what a learner hears or receives that is used for learning. It refers to the parts of language which the learner is exposed to and takes in. So uh, we can understand that input is uh, the language that the students take in or the information that the, the, the student or learner take in then for use it uh, uh, or produce it 
after that. For example, reading and listening. He listen. He will take many uh, or and receive many information, and he keep it uh, keep it entire or uh, in his or her memory. This is what is called input. For example, as I said, reading and uh, listening. Let's move to the next one, which is output. Output, I give you input. Now I uh, explain for you what is the main output. It's the, the opposite of the first one or input. Output in a language learning is a language which a learner produces while speaking or writing and demonstrates what he or she can express in the target language. So in the first one I told you that input is uh, reading and uh, listening. Now output is writing and speaking. When the students use a language and use what he keep in from the input. Output and input you should uh, know their definitions by heart. Let's move to the next one and the last one, which is objectives. Brief and specific descriptions of what a student is expected to be able to do by the end of a period of instruction, lesson, mo lesson model or semester. So uh, objective uh, is the first activity that, uh, or the first thing in the lesson plan the teacher uh, should uh, express his objective or what student will be able to do at the end of the lesson or semester uh, model etc objectives is uh, uh, for example if a teacher wants to uh, write uh, and lesson plan he will put first of all what is the objective at the end of this lesson for example students will be able to use simple present in the sentence in their speaking etc so this is objective of the lesson of that some for example uh, simple present this is what is mean by objectives i give you in this lesson uh, six important didactic concepts which as elicitation controlled practice fossilization input output objectives you should uh, uh, press pause and uh, read and uh, know these uh, definitions by heart because as I said they uh, give you many questions about these concepts. As I said in the first lesson from time to time I will give you some concepts I will explain it for you. If you have another concepts that you can't understand or that you don't have the de its definition you can just write it in the comment. I will uh, explain it for you in a, a special lesson uh, short if I have time. See you soon inshallah. Don't forget to press like, subscribe and share with other future teacher to help them.